Welcome. In this video, we will discuss defining and calling functions in C++. So what are functions? Well, there's something that we've already been using this far in this class. Int main is a very good example of a function. Int main is an integer returning function called main. And this main function is ran every single time you run your program. It is the entry point into your program, and you can have any amount of statements inside of there. But what are some other functions that we have used in this class so far? Well, we've used some from the CMath library, such as pow, square root, absolute value. We also used floating point absolute value. We've done round, floor. This is a little awkward that <laughs> should be there, but We've also used seal, sine, cosine, tangent, a bunch of things from uh, the CMath library we have used. And then we've also used functions from the IOMANIP library, such as setW and setFill. And I believe those are the only two that we've used so far. And we've also used setPrecision. And these are just things that are provided to us from C++ that we are able to use in our programs that makes our lives easier. Things that we don't have to do ourselves. We don't have to define these function or functions ourselves. And we know that they're functions because it is an identifier followed by a set of parentheses. And sometimes we have some parameters that have been passed inside these functions, um, but here those parameters aren't represented. We're just calling out the names of the functions. And these would all be examples of predefined functions. But what if we want to make some of these functions ourselves? Well, we need to start talking about those. And the first thing we need to talk about is how to define them. So we have function definitions. And all functions must be defined before they can be used. Because if a function is not defined, then the compiler is not going to think that it is something that's able to be used in the program because it's not able to be used in the program because it has not been defined and it will throw a compiler error. So how do we define a function? Well, we start with a header also known as a prototype. And this header is where we are going to give a function a return type if need, well, always have a return type, but sometimes we do have some functions that do not re return anything, but we'll look at those in the later video. They also give that function an identifier, AKA a name to call it by. And it also gives it a list of parameter types the function will use. And we will go into these parameter types and these parameter things in depth in a farther video. So this information that the header provides is provided to the compiler to let it know that this function is valid and will be used later on. So later on, when the compiler sees you calling a function that by some identifier and using a list of parameters, then it will know that that is a valid function to use. And this is what the header of a function tends to look like. It is some return type. This could be any type of data type that we have talked about this far or any type of data type that you will talk about in the future except for arrays but we won't get into that right now we will get into that once we talk about arrays and then you have an identifier that you call the function by and a list of formal parameters and we'll get into this formal parameter thing more deep in just a few in the next video and then after we have this header, we have a body of the function. And this is where the behavior of the function is defined. It's where the code that the function executes will exist. Because obviously in these examples, there's some code being ran off somewhere else. And where is that code written for these functions? Well, that is in the body of the functions. So this is kind of what it would look like in one of your programs. You would have some header in the program and we're saying this is an integer returning function. This function will return an integer and we'll get back, we'll get deeper into integer returning functions as well in a little bit. This is just kind of an overview video. And then we name it ABS. This is just like the CMath library function for absolute value and we're going to pass it some integer just like in the cmath library and then here is the body of the function it 
includes that header, but now you are naming what this parameter is called. This is a parameter inside of here. Right now, we only have one parameter in this formal parameter list. You can have zero or more parameters, but again, we'll go over parameters in a later video. And then we have some logic in here, which basically says if the number is positive or equal to zero, then we're just going to return the number. Otherwise, then we know it's negative and we need to multiply it by negative one and return that number to uh, to make it positive, to give the absolute value of it. And we'll look at this return thing even more in a later video. I know I'm saying that a lot in this video, but again, this is kind of an overview video. And here you don't necessarily need this function prototype up here as long as you place this function right here above the function that is calling it aka if you're calling a function from main if you put the body of a function above main then you don't have to have this header because this will act as the header right here but if you put this body of the function under main and then call this function in main, you would need to have this header above main so the compiler would know that this that this function is a valid function when it hits that function call in main. And I've used that word function call quite a bit in this video so far, so we might as well go over what a function call is. And a function call is what we want is when we want to use a function that we have made when we want to use one of these things here we're going to call it and it's very similar to what we've been doing in cmath and iomanip where we would just call the name of the function and in this power thing we would provide it say a three here and that would be the base and then comma two and that would raise that three to the power of two giving you three times three or nine so that would be a call to the function. So in general, when you want to call the function by its identifier, well, you're gonna call it by its identifier, just like we did over here, you're calling it by its identifier, and then you're gonna have some open bracket here. You're gonna have an, or an open parenthesis here, and then you're gonna have some parameter list in there. Again, here we do have parameters, but there could be no parameters. So if your parameter list is empty, they will look just like this. You'll just have a closing brace after. But if your parameter list is not empty, like in this case over here, well, then your function call will look just like this, where we are passing a parameter to the function. So basically here, we are calling this absolute value function, which we defined over here. And this is going to pass this negative 10 as a parameter over to the absolute value function, which will then be taken in as this num right here. And then we'll test here this negative 10 in this code right here. Negative 10 is not greater than or equal to zero. So it will hit the else case right here. Multiply that negative 10 by one, making it positive, and then return that number back so it can be saved right here in absolute value under or abs underscore 10 and then this abs underscore 10 can be used later on in your program and here's just a simple case where we just want to output what that absolute value is so let's take a look at headers bodies of functions and calling functions here in a program so here we are not def defining or the body of our ABS function is not above main. So we have a header for our ABS function above main. And this is saying I have some ABS function down below and it returns an integer and it takes an integer. So when it comes down here and it sees this ABS neg 10, it, well, it can see that neg 10 is an integer. And since it's an integer being called to this ABS function, which matches to this name, the compiler knows that this is a valid function call. So this function call will run 
and it will pass this neg 10, which is equivalent to negative 10 to this ABS function, which if we scroll down a little bit is defined right here in our body of the function. And it will take in some integer, it's called num that integer. See up here, it is called neg 10. When it gets passed over to this ABS function, it gets renamed to this, this integer called num. And not even just renamed in this case, it is a completely different copy in this case, but we will go over that in a different video, how we can make it either the same number there or a different one. But let's not get confusing like that right now. So it will copy that negative 10 into this num variable. And then it can check that negative 10 here against this if statement. And since negative 10 is greater than or it's less than zero, it will trigger this else statement, which will multiply the negative 10 by negative one, turning it into the positive value. And this return statement will return that positive 10 back here and then save that into abs underscore 10, and then come down here and output it to the screen. So if I come down here and open up a terminal window, I can compile this using G++ and the name of the program, and waiting for a second while it makes that lovely a dot out, which we can run with dot slash a dot out. And you see we get this output, which is the the, absolute value of negative 10, we're getting that because I just have the string being output there, is equivalent to 10. And that 10 is this abs underscore 10, which is being computed by passing this neg 10 to abs function. And then the abs function takes a copy of that neg 10 and places it in this num variable. And then you can use that num variable over here, which would be negative 10 in this case. And it would go through there and see, okay, cool. Well, negative 10 is less than zero. Multiply it by one and return that value to save into here and output down here. If I changed this to, I know neg 10 would be a bad name for it if I change it, but such is life. I'll just change it to 99 here. If I save that, come down here, compile, and wait for a second and then run the program, you see we get, well, I guess here I would have to change that also to 99 to make it make sense. And then if I come down here and compile and run that, you see I get the absolute value of 99 is 99 because it hits, this 99 gets copied into the, or gets sent over to ABS, which gets copied into num. 99 is greater than zero, so it just returns that number. And then, just for good measure, let's look at not using this header. So as I said, if you define, if this body of the function is above your main, then you don't need the header. So what that means, if I take this body and place it above main here and note, this could be, it doesn't have to be main that it is under or that it's above main isn't the only function that can call a function. Obviously, this function could call another function that you make. And so that function would be, need to be above this function. But for this type of example, main is the caller. So we're putting this function body above the function that's calling it. As you can see, here's the function that's calling it. So when we do that, the compiler will hit this header right here, and it will use that as the header to know that this is a valid function call down here. So you don't need to include the header because the header is already included right here. Except for in this case of the header, you name the variables, but the compiler is smart enough to know that that is still a header. And you can see that this will run just fine if I save this and we go back to a terminal here. And let me clear this out really quick. And then if I compile, and run, you see we get the 99 absolute values, 99. And I can switch that back over to negative 10. And we'll put negative 10 here. And when I save that, come down here, compile and run, you get the absolute value of negative 10 is 10. And 
that is all I have for you for this video. Just from this video, make sure you know what a header, a body, and a function call are. We will get more in depth with all the other terminology I used in this video, such as returns and date or return types and formal parameters, etc., in the following videos. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next.